Hello, I'm Julie Thibaud Dury, Closest Corner. I met so much incredible green people in New York City that I decided to make a sustainable guide. Green for Blue. With Closest or Sustainable Marketplace, I already helped people to buy sustainable, but it's not enough. Today, I'm going to meet Maya, and she's an ecotherapist. Join me to learn more about ecotherapists. Hello, Maya. Hello. <laughs> I'm so glad to meet you today, and um, we will talk about ecotherapists. Yes. Can you explain to me? Uh, can you just present you, please, for the beginning? <laughs> sure. Yes. I'm Maya, and I am a licensed psychotherapist, and also a certified ecotherapist, which is nature-based therapy. It's an umbrella term for a lot of different um, specific types of nature-based healing. And uh, can you explain to us more about ecotherapies? Because it's something very new. Um, to be, uh, I don't know a lot about that, and I think that other people is the same way. Because you say eco, we think about nature, therapies. It's the first mm -hmm. time that I hear <laughs> Totally. Yes, it's very like niche. Yes. And um, yeah, I got certified in 2017. And then it was also like very new, like in the ther in the psychology therapy world, like people just starting to explore it and basically explore it as, yeah, this umbrella of there being um, many possibilities for how that can look. For example, like equine therapy, which is therapy with horses. So taking people to connect with um, horses and learn about their emotions because horses are very sensitive yes. to um, shifts in your energy or emotion. So that would be like a form of ecotherapy. There's also like wilderness therapy. So Um, you know, these, these programs for, um, people who struggle with addiction or youth where they take them out into the wilderness, into woods, the woods and hiking. And, um, so that, those would be like forms of ecotherapy that people know about, <clears throat> but there's also, um, more subtle forms, like just bringing into, and this is what I do also is bring in Um, your connection with nature into the therapy session. So how I see ecotherapy is that in therapy or psychology, we focus on people cultivating resources for healing, but it's often seen as cultivating them from yourself or from other people. Yes. And how I see it is expanding it from that to connect to nature as like greater relationship to nature as a source of healing, not just that you have to go to people, <laughs> but that you can also go to a tree <laughs> or you can also go to uh, a landscape that you love. And so like developing your relationships beyond yourself, beyond people to like the greater network. Yes. Does that what, make sense? Yes, what you said, it's... Uh, <clears throat> You will say it to me if it's right, that the goal of ecotherapist is to listen to us because mm -hmm. in the in this world we, we run a lot, not in the mm -hmm. good way, in the <laughs> mm -hmm. because we work a lot. And we I don't know why, but we stop to listen to us, our body, mm -hmm. our feelings, and uh, you help us yeah. to learn more about us, maybe just It's something like that. Mm -hmm. I agree. With you. I, agree with you. I love what you just said because I think that so much of it is just learning to listen. Yes. And one of the big practices that I have developed and teach is um, 
during my ecotherapy sessions, when I did it, mm -hmm. when I do groups like in the park, I just have people go to what's called a sit spot, like a, a place that they're drawn to in nature mm -hmm. and just to listen. <laughs> like, so instead of just focusing on yourself to learn how to listen out to the environment and from there you can ask a question like if there's something you want to heal or you're concerned about you can ask a question and then you practice just listening to see how nature responds to your question like a meditation exactly yeah. exactly yeah yeah it's so it's a great to to learn about that because it's uh, something that I I did and uh, I do all the day but I do have the name of mm -hmm. therapist. Mm -hmm. And uh, you in New York you make a lot of events mm -hmm. about that. Can you explain to us? I, sure. I will I will write the the link of your website and uh, for sure. the future events. We will be I hope not on the same day as us. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Sure. Yeah. So it's, it's a really important value of mine to, um, offer community events because, um, I just feel that, um, it's important, uh, an important part of healing is doing it collectively with others, that there's a huge power in just the press, the physical presence of others. So, Um, I appreciate what is possible online, but I also think there's a value in physically being present with other people um, and also in nature. So I try to just offer events, um, very simple events, just to connect yourself to others, to listen to others and to really connect into like the network of people and nature. And also I think it's so important what we were talking about earlier that we know about each other, the others that are that are either working in the environmental mm. field or who, others who have climate distress, like just that we know about each other mm. because yeah, like we were talking about our system is really set up to focus on individuality and which gives us a sense of separation. And so there's something just inherently healing and just witnessing and being connected in a very, very simple way. Like it's nothing <laughs> complicated. It's like basic, but it's like powerful. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and when I, maybe we can think about, I don't know you, and when I need to call you, mm. why when I need to, to call an ecotherapist mm -hmm. and you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Well, I would say, I would say, yeah, we can do a lot of like healing in ourselves, but I think if we feel, if you feel really stuck, yeah. like there's things that keep coming up that you're not moving past, or there can just be a value in like being witnessed by someone else who understands mm -hmm. um so yeah i think i think you kind of know in yourself if and will feel drawn to someone as a as a therapist or healer if you feel like oh i can i can i really need that like that level of of support yes um, yeah and uh, i think that when you when you learn to to listen you, I think it's uh, easier after to make a therapist or to to be less depressive or something like that, because you understand you and you know what you need to do, what mm -hmm. you must to stop to do, and uh, mm -hmm. everything else. Mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was the first part of your question? <laughs> oh, I just my, my <laughs> sorry. Oh, oh uh -huh. I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's um <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> I love our discussion because I I was thinking about a lot of things. Yeah yeah, yeah 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 yeah. It's um what I was say I, I don't I don't remember. Right right before you said um that when you know yourself yes. you said something before that that I missed. Uh, when you when you learn about nature and your feeling oh, mm -hmm. and um, your 
they are thinking. Mm -hmm. I think it's easier after to, to start a therapist. Yeah. Because you you know the way. You yeah. know exactly what you need to work. Sometimes you don't know what you need to work. But, totally. But when you listen, you you can know that you are on the good way. Totally. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I see that as like alignment yes. or not feeling aligned. Yes. And usually our feelings or emotions are like the rudder that lets us know. Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling a lot of suffering or loneliness or anxiety, that would be telling you that, you know, there's something that, that you need to yeah. be with or work through. So that can, yeah, that's probably when you really know too that you need support if you feel for a long period of time that you feel misaligned or not not comfortable in yourself. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. oh, it works. If I call you to say, Maya, I need your help. <laughs> I would like to start an echo therapy time with you. Mm -hmm. Oh, it works. Oh, yeah, yeah. So basically, I work with clients just in general. I'm a licensed psychotherapist, so I can work with any issue. But I do specialize in climate-aware therapy, so climate distress. So for some people, that looks like anxiety, anger, grief around what's happening globally and the just ecological destruction or climate change. So I work with that and also with ecotherapy. So for those who want to feel more connected to nature or just have nature as part of the session. Yeah. Um, and that can look like physically being out, doing a session like out in the park or something, or it can look like just doing a regular session, but um, bringing in nature bringing in the connection yeah. of nature. So yeah, those are, those are my specialties and also can kind of weave those into regular sessions. So yeah, so it just starts with like a consultation call where we just see if we're gonna be a good fit, you know, mm -hmm. cause it's so important to like meet with someone that you feel gets you and <laughs> you like click and have a connection. So mm -hmm. it's nice to, on both ends, the therapist and the client, just see if there's Yes. Um, a connection, yeah. It looks great to have a therapist time with you on the park and on a natural. Mm -hmm. It's uh, mm -hmm. it's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> it's a I know. Very good idea. <laughs> I know. I love it. I love it because it's <coughs> it's yeah. It's really yeah. it's really nourishing and it expands the session to just include include the world. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I would like to to make an event with you because it's uh, it looks amazing. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love to. And um, do you have something else to add that I mm. asked you? Something mm. important for the people mm. we we look at you today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess just to notice what you're drawn to in nature, what and that could be on a macro scale like a whole landscape or place, or it could look like very micro, like a one specific flower or plant or even house plant, and just um, enjoy that connection and build on that connection and that it's possible with permission from nature, so permission from that specific plant or landscape to actually dialogue with it yes. and to start to share yourself with nature and to listen to what nature has to say um because <laughs> nature is our our source yeah. yes and we often forget about that mm -hmm. i think yeah 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 so once we can feel that like oneness with nature through us um then we can go more to nature as source rather than um just focusing on humans and just yes. focusing on ourselves separately. Yeah. And it's true sometimes when you're feeling bad, you just need to, to look at a tree mm -hmm. and uh, just see the bird mm -hmm. and the nature around the tree and mm -hmm. you forget about your <laughs> problems. Totally. Or <laughs> totally. Or just put your hand on the tree, just feel yes. like they're so solid. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, trees yeah. can be really supportive for anxiety. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And it's uh, and it's free. 
I know. I know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, it's really like um, finding your own power. Yes. That you don't have to spend a lot of money or go do all these things or mm -hmm. read all these books. Just that, yeah, slowing down <laughs> and being present with what is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Maya. Thank you. <laughs> it was so great. <laughs> so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye.